Hello and welcome to Amplicons of Biotech. We are back with another video and this video is on molecular marker analysis which contains interpretation of results of gel electrophoresis, genetic diversity and hybridity testing using SSR markers. To get more clarification on this video, you can watch some of our previous videos related to PCR and molecular markers. So without wasting any more time, let's start the video. If you are still watching the video, you might be familiar with these pictures, gel electrophoresis unit and gel documentation system. Using these two instruments or electrophoresis technique, we can check our PCR results and other nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. Here we have some sample pictures. Now one thing you need to know about is DNA ladder or a DNA marker. It is a solution of DNA molecules of different lengths. And it is loaded along with the samples to estimate the size of unknown DNA molecules. There are different types of DNA ladders with different lengths. For example, a 50 base pair ladder, 100 base pair ladder, and a 1KB ladder. So this is how DNA and RNA bands look like on a 0.8% agarose gel. In this picture, one microliter DNA in each length along with gel loading tie was loaded and after half hour gel picture was captured with the help of documentation unit. If you get a blurish appearance in your lens or some smear in your DNA bands, there might be a RNA or protein contamination in your DNA samples. In this second picture, you can see here are double bands in case of RNA. These bands are two forms of RNA as 28S RNA and 18S RNA that is ribosomal RNA. Now to understand more about the topic, we need to know about the nature of the marker. For example, SSR that is simple sequence repeats. SSR is a co-dominant marker. It means it can differentiate between two genotypes. Now, co-dominant markers are markers for which both alleles are expressed when co-occurring in an individual. Therefore, with co-dominant markers, heterozygotes can be distinguished from homozygotes allowing the determination of the genotypes. Here in offspring 1, you can see both the bands that is of parent 1 and parent 2 are present and in offspring 2, only uh, a single band is present of parent 2. It might be either of parent 1 and pa parent 2 but in offspring 1, uh, because there are though both bands, uh, it shows that offspring 1 is heterozygote and offspring 2 is homozygote so it can distinguish between genotypes in case of a dominant marker for example RAPD that is random amplified polymorphic DNA it is either present or absent only a single allele is expressed here now we will see about what is a monomorphic marker and a polymorphic marker if DNA sequence at a particular chromosomal region, suppose this region, is identical among all the members being tested, consider this as a member 1, 2, 3, 4, these are all different members or individuals which are being tested, then only one banding pattern will be observed. We can see here all the bands are at the similar region. So, only one bending pattern will be observed. In this case, the marker phenotype is called monomorphic. In case of a polymorphic marker, if the DNA from the same region in all the individuals varies among all the individuals, it means the marker bending pattern will vary across the lengths of DNA from different individuals. We can see here the bending pattern is different from the monomorphic one. These polymorphic markers are used to assess genetic diversity among genotypes, then testing or identifying heterozygotes and other marker associated breeding approaches. In case of genetic diversity assessment, 
here are 24 different genotypes of same genus species but we can see variation in the bending pattern as the DNA from the chromosomal region of each individual varies from each other. Now in case of hybridity testing, now we will take here an example. Suppose we have two parents, parent 1 and parent 2 and these are crossed to generate a F1 population. So how we will identify true hybrids from the F1 population? Suppose this is the allele of parent 1 and this is the allele of parent 2 and rest is our F1 population. Now uh, let, let us consider uh, this is a 100 base pair ladder and our parent 1 allele is near about 150 base pair and parent 2 allele is near about 170 base pair. Now uh, consider the first line from our F1 population the first sample or the first individual has an allele at 150 base pair it means uh, it shows that only a single uh, only a single allele from parent 1 is inherited in our uh, first sample now in second both the alleles from parent 1 and parent 2 that is of 150 base pair and 170 base pair are inherited in the second sample it shows that it is a heterozygous that is true f1 hybrid again in third sample a, a single allele from parent 2 is inherited here this is how we will assess the rest of the samples so this was a little bit about ssr marker analysis so if you think this video helped you in understanding the topic you can do one thing just subscribe to our channel and you can share this video with your friends you can write your queries and suggestions in the comment section below thank you for watching our video